Hello students, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to discuss about acceleration in two dimensions. If the velocity magnitude increases or decreases or the direction of the velocity changes, there is a acceleration is there. Okay, so the changes in the velocity per unit time is named as acceleration. How much is the changes in the velocity in unit time? That is the acceleration. In the two dimensional motion, we are going to study average acceleration and instantaneous acceleration. First of all, I will discuss average acceleration. Average acceleration means it is the acceleration in a particular interval of time. That means average acceleration we can represent like this. Okay. This meaning is the average acceleration that is equal to change in velocity in a particular interval divided by that time interval. Okay, so if you consider a motion in a plane, this is the x axis and this is the y axis. Okay, a particle is moving like this part. Okay. So, there is a point P1, the time T1, the particle is at P1, when the time is T1, and the particle is at P2, when the time is T2. Then, initially, the velocity of the P1, we can find it by drawing a tangent. This is the velocity, this I am taking as V1. And if I draw a tangent here, I will get the velocity in this. Okay. So, this is the V1 velocity and this is the V2 velocity. So, there is a changes in the velocity. I need to know what is the acceleration. That is the axular, average acceleration. Because the acceleration in a particular interval is average acceleration. Okay. So, average acceleration is equal to change in velocity that means final velocity vector that is v2 minus initial velocity vector that is v1 divided by change in the time interval that is t2 minus t1 okay this i can write it as change in velocity delta v divided by delta t this is the average acceleration okay this change in velocity may have x and y components so we can write like this so this is equal to delta Vx divided by delta Ti, okay, and uh, plus delta Vy divided by delta Tj, okay, this is the average acceleration, this is the x component of the velocity divided by the time, so that is the x component of acceleration into I plus this is the y component of acceleration into T, okay. Clear? Yeah. This is the average acceleration and we can find out the magnitude of the average acceleration ax square plus ay square. This is the magnitude of the average acceleration. How we will find out the direction? Direction of the average acceleration is similar to the direction of delta. We look at this diagram. From this diagram we can say that the change in velocity and average acceleration are in same direction. Okay, so the change in velocity direction we can find out from here. So look at this vector. This is a v1 vector and this is a v2 vector. Okay, I'm drawing a vector like this. I'm drawing a vector like this. This is delta v like that I'm taking. Okay, let me check it is curved. So Based on the triangular law of vector addition, two vectors can be considered the adjacent side of a triangle in the same order and the third side is the resultant. So, based on that, V1 and delta V are in the same order. So, I can say that V1 plus delta V is equal to V2. V2 is in the opposite order. Okay. So, I can write delta V is equal to V2 minus V1. Okay. So, this is correct. So, delta V having this direction. So, the average acceleration also having the same direction. So, this is the 
acceleration direction okay then now we will see the instantaneous acceleration the acceleration at a particular instant that is instantaneous acceleration that means if a car is moving at a 10 am what is its acceleration exactly at a particular time what is the acceleration okay so if you look at the average acceleration formula what is the average acceleration formula that is delta v divided by delta t this is the average acceleration formula in this delta t is very very small then this average acceleration become instantaneous acceleration because instantaneous means at a particular instant so the difference in time is very very small so we can say that the instantaneous acceleration is the limiting value of average acceleration that means the instantaneous acceleration is equal to limit as delta t tends to zero delta v divided by delta t okay this we will get as dv divided by dt okay derivative of instantaneous velocity divided by time okay the instantaneous velocity of x and y components so v is equal to vx i plus vyj okay this is the x component of the instantaneous velocity and v y is the y component then the instantaneous acceleration is equal to dv divided by that is dvx divided by dt i plus dv y divided by dtj okay this is the instantaneous acceleration okay this is what component this is the x component that is ax i plus this is a y g okay then if this instantaneous acceleration we can write like this also v is equal to dr divided by dt okay then if you substitute it here the acceleration is equal to d square r divided by dt square okay r is the position vector r having x and y component x i plus y j you substitute it here you will get as a acceleration is equal to d square x divided by dt square plus i and d square y divided by dt square okay this is the x component that is a x i plus a y j okay then what about the magnitude the magnitude is equal to square root of a x square plus a y square okay this is the magnitude of the instantaneous acceleration now we will see the direction of the instantaneous acceleration for that i am going to consider a body is moving in a plane so like this this is the x axis and this is the y axis a body is moving in a curved path like this so this is the p1 point at uh, t1 instant and this is a this is the p2 point at the t2 instant okay the velocity at this point is tangent that is v1 and velocity at this point i am taking as p2 what about the acceleration direction here the time interval is larger so we can take it as the average acceleration direction that acceleration direction is similar to the uh, similar to the change in velocity direction this is the v1 and this is the v2 vector so this is the change in velocity vector based on the triangle of the vector so this is the acceleration direction in this case okay for an instantaneous acceleration the time interval is very small so now i am going to consider a point here okay if i am going to consider a point here for that i am drawing another diagram okay so this is x and this is the y so this is the path of the particle and this is a p1 point okay this is a p1 point and another point i am considering here this is a p3 point okay so the tangent at this point gives the velocity here and the tangent at here will give the velocity of this point okay so the acceleration direction is a change in velocity direction so here this is the v1 and this is the v3 direction so the change in velocity is in this direction okay 
so acceleration direction is like this okay then next i am going to consider a closer point here i will consider okay here i will consider a point okay so x y this is the part okay here is a point p1 and here is a point p2 okay so, sorry not p2 that point is p4 okay the tangent at this point gives the velocity at this point and the tangent at this point will give the velocity at this point that is v4 change in velocity gives the direction of the accelerant this is v1 and the velocity v4 is in this direction so the change in velocity is in this direction and the acceleration is in this direction so now you see this this acceleration direction is perpendicular to a line joining between p1 and p4 okay so if i will consider again closer that is again perpendicular perpendicular so if i will consider a point p1 there the acceleration is perpendicular to the tangent so now i can draw like this this is the x and this is the y okay this is the path so i am going to consider the point p1 here this p1 point is at t1 instant so i am going to find out the acceleration instantaneous acceleration at t1 instant so that is i draw a tangent that is a v1 t1 instant and the acceleration is like this this is the acceleration at the t1 instant okay clear so now you see that in the two dimension the acceleration and velocity direction is making an angle is vary from different different okay so but in the straight line motion the angle between the velocity and the acceleration is zero or one eight that means the acceleration may be in along the direction of velocity or acceleration may be in opposite direction but here in the two dimension the angle between the velocity and acceleration vary from zero to 180 degree okay this is about the acceleration in two dimension thank you for watching the video please subscribe my channel if you like this video please put like and share